Hello, I'm Christina with The Turned Leg. I love to salvage, repurpose, and create and help others to do the same. I've started a new series on YouTube and a lot of you are asking for more. So we're gonna be talking about owning your own booth. Uh, in this series, Booth 101, I've been giving tips and tricks. Feel free to check out all the other videos. I will put one of the videos in a link above and you can just kind of start from there. There's an entire playlist for you to check out with things that I've learned over the years of being a booth owner. I have a booth at Plaza Antiques and Collectibles Mall in Lincoln Park, Michigan, and I've been there about six years. And over the time that I've been there, I've learned a lot. I was really shocked when I first started a booth because there wasn't a lot of information out there and everything was just new to me. And I'm somebody who always wants to know all of the things. So hopefully this will help you if you are new to owning a booth or if you are a seasoned booth owner, I hope if you have any tips or tricks to share, you'll put them in the comments down below. Today we are talking walls. <laughs> it's important, trust me. My very first booth at Plaza Antiques and Collectibles Mall had pretty standard pegboard all over most of the walls. And most booths do, but I know at some malls that you're in, sometimes there aren't any walls at all. <laughs> For my new space at Plaza Antiques, I didn't have any walls to start with at all. And I had to start from scratch. Luckily, I've learned a lot and I'm gonna share it all with you. First, why are walls important? <laughs> Walls are important because you can put up more stuff. I'm gonna tell you right now, this is a secret. Smalls are what make your rent and that means small stuff. You know, stuff you can hang on walls. Having more small items will help you sell more and that will help you turn a profit. So you always should be looking for ways to put more small items into your booth. Walls are a great way to do that. It's really important when you are setting up your booth to think about the layout. If you are just putting things on the walls and the edges of your booth, you are going to have less wall space or space for hanging smalls. And that means less money. So you always wanna to try to think of maximizing. How can I get more wall space in my booth and how can I hang more things to make more money? One of the solutions for this problem are designing end caps. I mean, grocery stores have been doing this for years, right? Areas at the end of each aisle where people are drawn to shop and buy stuff. People buy from end caps. For my first booth, which was an eight by 10, I loved the end cap idea. And sometimes I would put it at the end of the booth, the edges, and sometimes I'd create like end caps in the center. Wherever you can add extra partitions or walls, you can hang more stuff. So when you look at your booth space, do you already have walls? Do you need walls? How can you increase the wall space? It's a really important question. The first is pegboard, and uh, I didn't know anything about hanging pegboard when I first got my booth. Most of my booth was already covered, thank goodness, because that saved me a lot of time. But there were a few areas of my booth that did not have pegboard. And over the years, I learned how to roughly hang my pegboard and add more to my booth space so I could hang more smalls. I finally have the opportunity to upgrade my shipping room in my basement of my house. And so I found some pegboard. I'm gonna show you how to hang pegboard. And of course, this is just a small piece, but you can apply it to your larger booth space too. I was so lucky to find this piece of pegboard and these boards curbside. What a curbside treasure. You never know what you're gonna find. And right now with the cost of wood, this was a deal. So it was the perfect time to update my shipping room downstairs. 
The wall that I'm hanging the pegboard on is your basic drywall with studs underneath. I'm using a piece of pegboard that's unpainted and one by three boards. The first thing you wanna do before you hang your pegboard is locate all of the studs. You wanna make sure that the frame of your pegboard is into the studs of the wall. I used a stud finder to help me find the studs and I marked them with pencil. I'll put a link in the description box below to the stud finder that I use. I had pre-cut the one by threes and now I'm screwing them in with one and a quarter inch drywall screws. You need to place the boards as a frame around the outer edge of your pegboard and then put some through the center to add strength. Pegboard frame is complete. You could use a level and make sure that everything is perfectly plumb and level. I'm not that worried about it because this is just a pegboard for my shipping space. What's really important when you are hanging pegboard is that you have a frame and that you have cross sections through the middle enough to support and secure everything. The number of cross sections depends on how big your piece is. Now it's time to hang the pegboard. When you're screwing in the pegboard, you can use the same screws. You want to make sure you're screwing into the frame. Really important. I highly recommend painting your pegboard ahead of time with a roller on the ground before you hang it. I didn't have the luxury, so I am painting it, and I'm also using what I have. I'm using DIY paint in Mermaid Tail, but any paint will work. If you're using DIY paint, you will have to seal it. I added a little extra Old 57 paint because I was running low on Mermaid Tail to this, and then I sealed it with a spray sealer that I had on hand. Wax would also work too. And I love how it turned out. Now I have lots of room to hold all of my brushes for shipping. Pegboards are great, but you can also use old doors or old shutters or even those old bifold doors on closets for hanging things. These make great walls and end caps. One of the things that you're really going to need to make sure that they are safe in your booth are L-brackets. The bigger, the better. L-brackets are pricey. If you can spot them at garage sales or estate sales, pick them up. And the bigger, the better, because they'll hold more. If you're interested in finding out more information about how to attach your items to the walls and to all of your end cap displays, please click the link to the video above. Another alternative to doing pegboard is creating your own wall. And you can take old doors or shutters and create a wall that way, or you can create what I call a slat wall. You'll just need some extra boards. I find boards on the side of the road all the time, and I'm always grabbing them for new projects. In fact, for my latest booth redesign, I was very lucky to come across an entire pile of boards just a few days before I was creating my wall. In order to create the slat boards, all I do was I make sure the boards are not flush and I leave a small gap. This gap should be large enough that an S hook can fit in between. While you're screwing in the boards, just don't forget to leave the gap. That way you can easily hang things in between any of the boards at any level and it's really helpful. The thicker the boards are, the more weight they will support. So if you're gonna be hanging heavy items, make sure you're choosing heavy duty boards instead of just lightweight trim or molding pieces.
Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope now you have more ways to work with walls in your booth and perhaps you have more ways to squeeze in a few more smalls to make more money. If you like this video, make sure to click the like button and subscribe to my channel so I can continue to help others to salvage, repurpose, and create.